creative friends, it's Gwen. Today I'm scrapbooking back to school photos without using back to school theme supplies. Why? Honestly, I think they're a waste of money. I find them way too specific for the photos that I have and why are they always in such bold, bright primary colors? I promise you don't need these theme supplies in your stash and in today's video, I'll show you why. I've got some practical ideas to share, so let's get started. Today's video is part of the We Rule the School YouTube Hop, hosted by my dear friend, Sarah Scraps. Be sure to check the description box below for all the details on that. I'll be using the Marigold Collection by Maggie Holmes and a cut file from cut to You, my cut file shop. Oh yes, and I'm also using Distress Ink and I hope you're ready for some drama because things go a little pear-shaped along the way. I'll get to that in a moment. I need to share with you first some of my tips for creating back-to-school layouts without having to purchase back-to-school themed supplies. My very first tip is is to use a cut file. A themed cut file can convert any scrapbook collection into a specific theme. I much prefer to choose collections that are more general and generic and then I can mix and match cut files to match the themes of my photos. So here's the plan for the layout. I have backed my cut file and created a frame for my photo. I want to use this starburst stencil to sort of have a, um, a highlight area underneath the photos. At this point, I was looking for a more centered design. I wanted all of the elements to be centered on the page and spread outwards from there. I like to take a little bit of time to really map out the layout before I start using any of my mixed media. I found that works best for me to have a really clear plan of the end outcome before I start applying my inks and things. This is my favorite way to apply Distress Ink. I've just got a blending brush here and I'm just gonna work from the center of the stencil outwards and I'm going to blend it as I go. So the outer edges of the stencil will be a much lighter color than that center area. Everything was going along great until this happened. Just when I was starting to feel confident with my mixed media, I tried to pull it up, but I could not. So at this point, I have two options. I can start my background all over again. I didn't want to do that because I really liked the pattern paper frame that I had selected. So the only option I could see would be to cover it up. It was super close to the edge of the page, so photos weren't going to work but a paper strip could. So here is plan B. I'm going to have the paper strip down the left hand side and I'm going to run my embellishments and photos out from that edge. In the process of freaking out, I managed to get another smudge on the right hand side there. So I'm gonna cover that up with that green tag. Speaking of green, that was a very deliberate choice. My second tip for scrapbooking with back to school photos is to use the colors that are in the school uniforms. I've chosen this specific collection because I knew it had a lot of really nice warm tones, but it had the deep dark green that I wanted to pull from my photo. I also knew that I had the warm tone of the door that I had to work with. Considering the drama, I'm feeling really good about this stage of the layout. It is feeling very structured, which I really like. It's time to add some embellishment clusters and things are getting serious because I'm gluing stuff down. My photo is quite dark, which is why I've chosen more lighter pieces to work in the background and in my clusters. I'm keeping the dark green elements minimized. So I've got the leaves and I do have that little tag poking out on the right. My photo is matte in a dark green frame and that creates the visual triangle for the page. One of the biggest problems you'll have when using a generic scrapbook collection is that you don't have those elements that are in the collection to help you tell the story. That brings me to tip number three and that is to really have a think about the location 
location of your photos. You do have a lot of time to prepare and you'll know in advance what kind of colors are in your school uniform. So I would plan this out. This photo was taken on her way out the door the very first day of school, but you might choose a location like in front of your classroom or perhaps at the school bus stop. Don't underestimate the story that can be told by the background of your photo. It's time to add in some more details and I am looking at textured elements at this point in the layout, particularly the chipboard pieces. I don't want to leave it too late to add these because I know in this collection that some of them are quite large. I did find some book icons which are very on theme and then this super cute little owl. Owls are wise, that could work. And that is tip number four and that's to be flexible with the kinds of icons that you want to use on your layout. You may not have pencils or books or buses in your collection that you're working with but I'm sure you can find some elements that will still work and help tell the story. It was at this point that I wanted to add a little detail above the photo and I'm going to use my tab punch for that. I've been using my punches a bunch lately and I did make a video with a heap of ideas and tips and tricks. I think you'll like that so I'll leave a card for that here. I'm loving how this is all looking so it's time to lock into position a few more elements. I'm going to let the cut file be the title for the page so it's going to be first day and that is one of the other tips that I have for you. I would choose a title that is very specific to the theme. It will help tell the story of the photos in a far better way than a more generic title. Remember, you don't have the backup support of the icons that you would have in a themed collection. So these little touch points, the background of your photo and a very clear specific title will really help the viewer to understand what the photo is about. That does bring me to my next tip and that is to allow space in your layout design for journaling. I know you don't see a lot of journaling on the pages that I share here, but that is because it is often added after the fact. I leave a lot of the personal details off my pages for privacy reasons, but don't worry, I do add them in after. So it was at this point that I noticed a little gap there underneath the owl and my photo and I want to fill that in a little. I did find a dark green tag and I was lucky actually because it wasn't too large. I feel like if it was any bigger it wouldn't have worked there but I like the balance. I like the balance of the colour and I like that it fills in that space. Oh yes, I wanted to show you that vellum butterfly. Little tip when you're attaching those to your layouts and that's to apply the glue behind the printed design. Liquid glue does show through vellum, so you have to be a little bit strategic about where you put your glue when placing those elements down. I'm also finishing off the layout with some bows. I'm all about them bows, and this collection actually has a full 12 by 12 sheet that you can fussy cut out. It could very well be my most favorite pattern paper of all time. Here are some close-up images so you can see all the beautiful layers and the texture on the page. You'll also notice no sign of my mixed media mishap. If you like the way that I scrapbook or the way that I chat about the way that I scrapbook, I would love it if you give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new. So you no longer need to waste money on back to school themed scrapbook supplies. And guess what? These tips and tricks work on any theme. They will really help you get more out of your everyday scrapbooking collections so you can do more with less. If you're looking for further back to school ideas from me, be sure to watch this video next or check the description box below for my creative friends who are joining in on the hop. I'll see you all next time. Until then, bye.